I played Terraria's SGA mod, and it was awful. Oh my god. Shit. Oh my god. Despite this mod causing me to be filled with rage that increased with every single passing second, this, this mod was super duper cool. It had some crazy bosses, even crazier weapons, and all sorts of different dimensions to explore. But don't, don't, don't go to this one. This one's, this, 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 this one's weird. Also, sorry that it's been like a month since I uploaded. I got sick. Like, like really, really sick. But I'm okay now, so let's suffer together with some modded Terraria. As soon as I spawned in, I noticed some weird gray ore with purple little specks in it, but I couldn't mine it yet, so I just began getting wood. I then began exploring to the left, but I found a whole bunch of nothing, so I began exploring to the right, and I came across a desert, and if you've watched some of my other videos, you'd know that I'm going to be making some cactus armor. Well, in the desert, I also found some moist sand. It's used to make some bar called photosite, but this photosite required a lot of other things to make it as well, so I grabbed the moist sand and continued right. But not for long, because I ran into the crimson. I figure I'll mention this now because it happens a lot, but most of the enemies that I kill pop up a status message that reads, the enemy list was somehow null. How? I, I, I don't know why it does this, but it does. Don't, don't ask me. Once I was back at spawn, I spent the rest of the night making my humble little abode and some cactus armor. On day two, I began mining down to get ores and such because I hadn't found any caves on the surface. Well down there, I found some other parts for the photosite, including decayed moss and raw photosite. After mining for a bit, I came back up with a bunch of different ores like gold and iron, but when I went to go smelt them, a boss named the Copper Wraith just suddenly spawned out of absolutely nowhere. Huh? 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 Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is going on? What is going on? All things considered, this guy's pretty weak. It wasn't until after I was brutally murdered that I realized there was a creepy little piece of text under all of the bars that read, Crafting this will anger something. Despite this warning, I continued crafting and made myself some stone javelins, a melee slash throwing weapon. It was pretty good to start off with, but they were consumable, so I wanted to find like a more permanent replacement. After some more crafting, my luck ran out and the copper wraith spawned again, and I was murdered. Again. Later on, I made a gold pickaxe to find the strange ore outside. It's called Novus Ore, and it makes some pretty cool gear, but I needed something from the copper wraith in order to make the Novus bars. The next day, I started making the elevator so that it would be easier to find ores, and spent pretty much the entire day down there. In doing so, I was able to make full gold armor and I found a couple of life crystals. I continued the elevator on day 4, mainly for more life crystals, and by the end of the day I had 200 health and felt pretty ready to take on the Copper Wraith. I started day 5 by starting the construction of the grand hotel all my NPCs are going to be housed in. I also decided that using things like Magic Builder and Insta Houses are kinda lame. Like, I, 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 I've learned that I want to make my own shit. So from here on out, I most likely won't be using items like that anymore. Pretty much immediately after the construction started, I took a break from the construction to fight the Copper Wraith. That spawns him too? Oh, I got him. Oh my god, I got him. He got stuck on my house. He got stuck on my house that I'm building. Oh my god, what an idiot. The boss fight was super underwhelming. It was cool, but super underwhelming. But from it, I got an item called the Wraith Targeting Gamepad. It enables Terraria Gamepad auto-aiming. And I thought it sounded cool, so I equipped it. I then spent the rest of the day and a bunch of the next day building the grand hotel that's gonna sap all of the money out of these new NPCs. Once the hotel was completed for the time being, I went over to fix the ugly ass holes that surrounded my house, but the slime ram was making things much more difficult than it needed to be. At some point super early on day 7, I had killed enough slimes for the slime king to spawn, but after a while of fighting it, I just kind of gave up because I didn't want to waste any more time doing something that I would probably lose in the end. Afterwards, I went, I, went to go t I went to go take a shit, as one does, and didn't realize that going into my settings didn't pause the game, so I lost all of day 7 and a part of day 8. I continued the elevator on day to hopefully find some more life crystals, but had no luck whatsoever. I did, however, gather up enough materials to make magic storage. I ended the day upgrading my arsenal by making the Novus Staff, a magic weapon that casts homing Novus bolts, and the Novus Bow, a ranged weapon that converts wooden arrows into Novus arrows. On day 9, I had fully moved into the ground floor of my NPC hotel, and finally got around to making a stopwatch to help future me with editing. I, 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 I appreciate it, thank you past me. 
I then did some research into all the weapons because I still didn't know what class I wanted to be, but it was most likely going to be melee, just because there are significantly more melee weapons. Later on, I ended up exploring the entire right side of my world in search for caves, but I didn't find a single one. I also came to the conclusion that I had no ocean on either side, so if there's anything to do with oceans in this mod, I guess I'll, I guess I'll never know. I'll just I'll, I'll have to skip it. Super early the next day, I met this guy known as the Contraband Merchant, but he refused to let me see his wares because he closed up shop. Once the Contraband guy left, I summoned the King Slime, but lost through the lack of health, and at this point, I was just kind of getting annoyed that I couldn't find any life crystals. It was... I don't know, I don't know, I, I get pissed off. I spent the rest of the day looking for life crystals, and I, I only found two, man. I only found two. I continued searching for most of day 11 and actually found the rest of that I needed. It was, it was wonderful. I then went back up and defeated the King Slime that night, and just barely lost to the Eye of Cthulhu. At the time, I thought that I lost because I didn't have a sword to finish the last part of the fight when the Eye of Cthulhu was just going crazy, so I went home and made the Nova Sword on day 12. I now had a bunch of time to kill until night, so I went over to the Crimson, built a little arena, summoned the Brain of Cthulhu, and lost to it, but, but just barely, just barely lost to it. After all that nonsense, it was night times, and I spent the rest of the night and a bit of day 13 defeating the Eye of Cthulhu. With the Eye of Cthulhu defeated, I was super excited to be able to use the Shield of Cthulhu, but, but, but it, was, it was fucking broken. It said it was broken and it couldn't be used until it was reforged. What, what, kind, of, what, kind, of, what kind of bullshit is that? I was searching and I can't find like the clip of when this happened, but at some point a meteorite landed, so I did a bunch of research on the uses of meteorite and apparently I would need it to make the reverse engineering station, along with laser markers and energized batteries and vials of venom, for any sort of future crafting. It all seemed super complicated and I was not looking forward to it whatsoever. Once it was finally bright enough to see, the goblin army attacked, so I pretty much spent all day taking care of them. From one of the mage goblins, I got a magic weapon called the Shade Flame Staff. It spews a stream of shadow flames. It, it sucked, but it looked really cool, so I used it anyway. I spent the rest of the day constructing my NPC hotel vertically. I spent the first part of day 14 gathering up the materials to make both the King Slime Summon and the next boss's summon, because I, one, I wanted, the sli I, I wanted the slimy saddle, and two, I just didn't want to have to make the next boss's summon later, so I just did it now. I went over to the Crimson, made all of the summons that I wanted to, and defeated the Brain of Cthulhu. Later that night, I finally got to see what the Contraband Merchant sold, and it was it was a bunch of nothing. I refought and defeated the Eye of Cthulhu and the King Slime super early on day 15 so that I could have the slimy saddle and a shield of Cthulhu that actually works. Afterwards, a new NPC named Draken the Durgan arrived, and he was like the Anubis of the Ancients Awakened mod. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my Ancients Awakened video like right now. But, but basically, that meant that Draken told me what the next boss was and how to summon it. He also had a shop for something called Expertise that I remembered getting after defeating some of those bosses from earlier. Basically, the Expertise shop was a shop full of special items that I may or may not need in the future to progress. They're, they're, just, they're just wacky items. They're just wacky items. One of these items was called the Caliburn Compass. It points to the location of all three Caliburn shrines like that are located throughout my world, so I attempted to make my way over to one of them. While making my way over there, I found the Skeleton Merchant guy, and he sold some whack new shit as well. That mostly made no sense to me, but I bought all of them anyways, and equipped the Snake Eyes. It allows every non-crit to increase its damage from anywhere from 1% to 100%. Eventually, on day 16, I had managed to reach one of the Caliburn Shrines, and from the dank seeds to the clouds of flies, this place was weird as hell. At the bottom of the shrine was some sort of sword stuck in some stone, so I yanked it out and watched the sword come to life. And it almost took mine. It almost took my life from me. But I defeated it no problem. I defeated the Spirit of Caliburn and got nothing but a trophy from it, so I spent the entire day making my way over to the next shrine to see if there was something I would get there. Once I was there, I did the same thing as last time, but this time the sword just popped right out. And that's when I realized that I probably could have taken the sword from the first shrine. Like, like I didn't have... The, the sword just popped out when I tried to spawn the spirit. I could have I just done that for, for the first shrine. Anyways, the sword that I got was called the Caliburn. It summons a spectral blade to home in on your mouse cursor for a few seconds or until it hits three times. It also said that the damage improves by 25% per spirit defeated. I began making my way to the final shrine on day 18 and this took so long. But once I was there, I summoned the spirit of Caliburn again and this time around was significantly harder than last time. Like, it, oh my god, it was so much harder. I lost over and over again with no luck at beating this thing. I ended up going back to the first shrine to see if things would be easier over there, but things were just as hard. I think I just kept dying. I, I think the spirit is like the same per sword, and that it increases like per one you defeat. You know what I mean? 
After a lot of trial and error with a bunch of different shitty weapons, I was finally able to defeat this spirit. I ended up getting another sword that was also named Caliburn, but this one summoned spectral copies of itself to strike nearby enemies on swing, and it was, it was very, very cool. There was only one more spirit left to go, and I just knew that this one was going to be, oh my god, so much harder than the last two. But I was at a point where all I could do was keep fighting the spirit over and over again until I eventually won. It took me a long ass time, but on day 20, I was finally able to defeat the Spirit of Caliburn. Yes, there we go. Let's go. From the final spirit, I got another sword named Caliburn, but this one flings crystal shards from the blade, and against normal enemies, this one was easily the best. Like, hands down, easily the best one. I then went home, threw all of my trophies up on the wall, and began preparing for the next fight, the Spider Queen. Now, the issue with this boss is that I have a, like, like pretty, pretty hard arachnophobia, so I wasn't looking forward to this fight whatsoever. But I spent the rest of the day making the arena anyway and summoned the grossest boss I have ever seen on day 21. I absolutely, I, I, oh my god, I absolutely hated how this boss moved. And for being a pre-hard mode boss, this one was super duper tough. After dying over and over again, I was eventually able to defeat the Spider Queen.
Oh, yes. Oh, okay, I still died, but I killed it. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Oh, my God. I hate spiders so much. But anyways, I got nothing worth mentioning other than a bunch of vials of venom that are used to make a bunch of gear and such for future crafting. Now that I had the venom, I was able to make the reverse engineering station for all sorts of crafting, but I quickly realized that absolutely nothing was good. Not a single item I could make was good. I made a melee weapon named the Laser Lance that spins a space lance around myself to damage enemies, and it was super cool, but it only dealt one damage. And I'm fully aware of the bright red text that says technological weapons do less damage at low electric charge, and I fully do not care to increase my electric charge whatsoever. I fully do not care, so I just tossed everything into storage. I was angry that I would actually have to work to get stuff done, so I spent the rest of the night farming Brains of Cthulhu for money. On day 22, I bought a shit ton of potions for obvious reasons. I wanted infinite buffs, because infinite buffs are so nice. I then made the heart guard using a bunch of junk I got from the Calibran Shrines. Like, they had these chests in the Calibran Shrines that just had a bunch of junk in them. And I used that junk to make the heart guard. It gives me an extra 20 HP and makes hearts give an extra 5 health. Afterwards, I went and asked Draken what was next, and he said there was another boss to defeat back at the Calibran Shrines. But I didn't want to head back to those shrines just yet, so I made some more NPC housing, and I don't know about you... But I really like my house this time around. Like, like I, I really, really like this hotel. Anyways, before I would attempt the next modded boss, I would have to defeat the Skeletron. So I headed over to the dungeon, built a quick little arena, and miraculously beat him on the first try. Usually it takes me like 3 to like fucking 20 tries to beat this boss. But I'm a gamer. I'm a gamer. So I obviously did it on my first try. I began looking around the dungeon for anything new on day 23, and there was a new item here or there, but eventually I came across this portal. This portal was huge, and once I stepped inside, it transported me to a place called the Deeper Dungeons. It was exactly like the dungeon, but deeper. Basically, I could go down an infinite number of floors and grab as much loot as my little heart desired, but I ended up losing track of time. Like, like literally the time stopped and everything, but don't, don't, don't you worry, because I calculated how long I was in there for. And it was, it was about a full day, so it's now the end of day 24. At the very end of my time in the deeper dungeons though, I, I legitimately thought I was stuck. Alright, I'm over this place. Huh? Huh? Oh my god, am I stuck? What the fuck? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Oh. I mainly got a bunch of junk from the deeper dungeons, but I did get one thing of use called the Stone Barrier Staff. It summons a stone golem to project an auric barrier, and it looked pretty badass in my opinion. I, I ended up completely forgetting about the next boss, so I went back up to Draken to see what was next, and he told me that, again, those Caliburn Shrines that I got all the swords from are protected by a strong, fly-swarming, roiling creature. So being the genius that I am, I made this boss a summon and headed to the jungle. Once I got there, I made a shitty arena and realized that this boss is much harder than I thought it would be. Like, this guy followed me home after I died, and I still fumbled the fight. It was... it... it was embarrassing. It was just embarrassing. I ended up spending the next three days trying to beat this guy and failing every single time. I think my biggest issue was all the extra enemies that this guy would summon mid-fight. Like, like, the flies that swarm around him are unbelievably annoying. This took me so much longer than I expected it to take me. Like, I ended up building myself a, ni a nice little house down here, and eventually, I brought myself a little bit of company, if, if, if you know what I mean. After all this trial and error, I was able to smush that pile of sludge on day 27.
There we go. Woo! I kind of cheated, but that's all right. Kind of cheated, but that's all right. Okay, so I kind of cheesed the fight a bit, but it's only because this fight was unnecessarily hard for the point I was at. From Merc, I got the Nat Staff, a summon weapon that summons a Nat attracting dung pile to hover above myself. So I can now use those annoying ass Nats to fight for me, but I do have a pile of shit that's just hovering above my head. With his defeat, I also got the last component needed to make Photosite Bars, so I made a bunch of those and turned them into the Mangrove Striker, a melee weapon that honestly wasn't very good compared to the other weapons that I had. After all this sludge nonsense, I went down to hell and mined a whole bunch of hellstone. And I, I'm fully aware that like I could have gotten hellstone beforehand and not cheese the boss fight a bit, but I am I'm an avid believer of do not get hellstone before like you do before the wall. You should only use hellstone for like the final wall of flesh fight. I don't I feel like you shouldn't have it for like the skeletron or anything, unless you're on like the hard mode where like you only get one life. Then it's then it's probably acceptable. I then turned all that hellstone into full molten armor and spent the rest of the night making the hell highway. I also spent the entirety of day 28 making the hell highway. I finished up the highway on day 29 and just barely beat the wall of flesh. Now that I was in hard mode, I spent a bunch of time researching new gear to make and a lot of it required fiery shards, so I spent a little bit of time killing enemies in hell to get some. After a bit, I realized that this is going to take way too long to do with my current arsenal, so I began mining altars on day 30. Once I mined all the altars I could find, which wasn't many this time around, I spent the rest of the day working through all of the hard mode ores. During this time, I kept on farming enemies in hell for fiery shards and was able to make the Thermal Blade, a melee weapon that is just really, really strong. I was about to start crafting with all of my adamantite on day 31, but I couldn't make an adamantite forge because the recipe had changed and I now needed to defeat the Cobalt Wraith, the older brother of my arch nemesis, the Copper Wraith. Before I did that though, I wanted to make sure I was ready, so I got even more fiery shards and used them along with a bunch of Novus bars and my Molten Armor to make the Blaze Worm Armor Set. This armor set was basically just an upgraded version of the Molten Armor, but it also increased my Apocalyptical Chance, which is where my critical hits can get critical hits, resulting in 3 times damage. I also made the Spike Buckler, which is just a shield that gives me more defense and reflects double the damage I take back to melee attackers. Now that I felt completely ready to take on the Cobalt Wraith, I summoned him and he was much crazier than his younger brother. Like, just just look at how many appendages this guy has. I spent all of Day 32 trying to come up with different ways of defeating this Wraith, like flying above him or circling around him, but none of them worked. On Day 33, I got myself some pixie wings and gave the Cobalt Wraith fight another try, but this time I just turned off my brain and it, 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 it worked. I didn't do anything special, I just used brute force. Bitch, why the hell did he spawn all the way down there? Yeah. Okay, that was much easier. With its defeat, I could finally make an adamantite forge, but at this point, I didn't even need it anymore. I had made much better gear in my time trying to defeat the Cobalt Wraith, that I didn't need to use anything adamantite related. The only thing that I actually made other than, like, the forge itself was an adamantite pickaxe. I spent the rest of the night dreading the next boss fight, because I was going straight back to fighting Merc, but harder. I summoned this pile of gunk for the last, last, last time, only 38 minutes into day 34.
Okay, so I get that like I cheesed the fuck out of that boss fight, but the only reason I cheesed it is because it's 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 unreasonable. That boss fight was unreasonable. The guy had like fifteen thousand merc. He had fifteen thousand health or something like that. And then d during the fight, there's this killer fly swarm that has twenty three thousand health. It's just it's just unreasonable at this stage in the game. It's just unreasonable. Like the last boss I fought was like the wall of flesh and it had 12,000 health and now this guy has over 30,000 health no yes i choose the merc fight again but I, I i don't even feel bad because fighting a boss that has 15,000 health and a mini boss that has 23,000 health all without dying is is literally impossible from it i got some cool ass weapons that dealt really really bad damage so i thought that all this was just pointless but it turns out that the death of the second merc allows a new ore to grow in the jungle virulent ore I spent the rest of the day mining this new ore, and, and, and I pulverized the queen bee. Like, like I, st I stomped her ass into the ground so that I can make a portable hive on day 35. It, it just summons bees. I mean, sure, you can get into all of, like, the logistics of the weapon, like how the damage is based on defense and summoner values, but it just summons bees. I then went over to Draken to see what I would be doing next, and he told me that some strong being has been hampering our ability to fly since Hardbot had started, and that this thing resided in the snow biome, so I spent the rest of the day gathering up the materials to eventually make the boss's summon. Once the sun had risen on day 36, I made my way over to the snow biome, summoned the next boss, Cerno, and was brutally murdered in seconds. The, the, the sheer brutality this anime girl used on me made me realize that I should probably go ranged instead of melee for now, because all of my melee weapons are true melee. So I spent some time making the Heat Beater, a shotgun that seemed like it would be super good, but the spread of the bullets was kinda turning me off. I tried to fight Cerno again later that night, but to no avail. Because I had switched to range, I spent the morning of Day 37 mining Animantite to make full Animantite armor. Afterwards, I attempted Cerno a few more times, but I just wasn't getting anywhere. This boss didn't seem like it was that difficult, I, I, I don't know why I was struggling so much. At this point, I was just trying to cope with the fact that I sucked at this game by trying to get a new weapon, because it, it, it was the shotgun's fault that I was losing, not mine. I did some research and found out that you can summon a dank mimic the same way you would summon like a hollowed mimic, so I made a dank key and summoned one. It dropped the Tree Peter, a ranged weapon that causes arrows to fly super duper fast and inflict Dryad's Bane. It seemed like a super awesome weapon, so I went to go test it on Cerno, and I got so close to beating her. After just a few more tries, I was able to clip this fairy's wings on day 38. Oh, okay. Sick. This fight was basically like All Might versus One For All, where I'm All Might, and All For One is a girl, and a fairy, and unbelievably pretty. A any anyways, from Cerno I got Cerno's Wings. It does a lot of different things that I don't really want to read, but the main thing is that it has super duper high mobility. Just, just look at me fly back and forth. I also got a bunch of cryo stall bars that I instantly used to make the Geodo, a pickaxe slash melee weapon that sucked as both a pickaxe and a melee weapon. 
Once I was done with everything, I went to go talk to Drake, and you know, you know, you know the drill by now. But but this time he didn't have anything to tell me. He just told me to continue protecting himself and the other NPCs. So I took a quick peek at my boss checklist, and I just had the mechanical bosses to defeat. I was initially gonna fight one of them right away because it was almost nighttime, but their summons required a new piece to be crafted. Harvested Souls. Now in game, it took me quite a while to figure this bit out, but all I needed to do was kidnap any enemy in the game using a soul jar that I bought from Draken, and then toss that jar into a machine called the Newsmatic Crucible, and then power said machine using coins. Now I know what you're thinking. Okla, why did you kidnap an ice fairy specifically for this machine? It's 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 because I thought of the machine as a jar, and I thought of the ice fairy to be from. Later that night, I used the souls that I harvested from the ice fairy to summon and defeat the Skeletron Prime. I was doing research on an upgrade to my boots on day 40, but in order to make them, I needed some glow rock. But I didn't have any glow rock, so I used a grav potion and went to space, expecting to find like some asteroids up in the sky or something. But when I hit the world height limit, I was transported into a place called the Near Torarian Orbit. Now this place was filled with asteroids, but I suffocated immediately. I was now very intrigued by space and found out that the wizard sells little air bubbles to allow breathing in space, but I was not welcomed when I got back. There was some weird ass crystal and some weird ass aliens that were guarding it. I, I just wanted to explore some more, but there was a cooldown in between air bubbles, so I suffocated again. After a couple of trips, I ended up getting enough glow rock for what I wanted, so I used it to make these soul spark boots on day 41. They're, they're just an upgrade to the boots I had, they just make you like jump higher and fall faster and run faster. You, you, you know what they are. Other than making the boots, I didn't really do much of anything during the day portion of day 41, but once night fell, I summoned and defeated both the twins and the destroyer on day 42. With every single soul in the palm of my hand, I can now make the Omni Soul. There's a specific weapon I wanted to make using these Omni Souls, but I would need a couple more components first, those components being the other drops from Cerno, like the other weapons. I farmed this boss for the rest of day 42 and most of day 43 to get these drops, because Cerno just wouldn't drop them. I swear to god I fought her like 30 times until I got them. During, during all this though, I got a cool summon out of it. It's, it, it is an ice fairy, it, yeah. Anyways, I had everything I finally needed to make the Big Bang, a melee weapon that does a whole bunch of shit, like shooting projectiles and costing mana to actually be used, but I, I, I made it because it deals 235 damage. That is end game type damage, and I haven't even made a Plantera arena yet. The next boss on my list was the Wraith of Caliburn, so I made my way down to one of those shrines again and got absolutely creamed. Oh my god, what the hell was that? I figured that this boss was going to take a whole bunch of tries, and getting there was going to waste a lot of my time. So I made a basement, placed a teleporter in said basement, and placed wire from the basement all the way to the entrance of one of the shrines. It took me, it took me almost like an entire day to do this, but I, I thought it would benefit me in the end. I, I was wrong. I was completely and utterly wrong. I was wrong, because I went down to fight the Wraith of Caliburn for a second time on day 45 and absolutely destroyed this guy.
Luckily, I got one. Oh, shit, is it dead? Is that it? Is it done? I am so good at this game. From the final form of Caliburn, I got another copy of all three Caliburn swords and an equipable called Undying Valor. It takes all damage I receive and turns it into a DOT stack or a damage over time stack. With the defeat of this boss, the Caliburn compass now points to a new area with some sort of eye symbol that I kind of recognize, but I can't seem to put my finger on it. I went to this area right away and it just made everything dark and creepy and some sort of smoke was creeping around my screen. I, I don't know what it was. It was, it was awful. Not to mention these weird ass eyeballs that would slam into me and just scream. Eventually when one of these eyes hit me I was transported to a place called the Limbo, an insanely creepy dimension that just so happens to be the home of all these eyes. I remembered playing a mod pack with something like this in Minecraft so I knew I had to get to the bottom of this place but there were so many goddamn eyeballs everywhere that would just send me all the way back up to the top, it was so annoying. After a while I ended up dying and got transported back to the overworld. Now that I was back, all I wanted to do was make some turtle armor, so I spent the rest of the day farming some turts. I continued farming these guys on day 46, but only managed to get a single turtle shell. Afterwards, I went back to the limbo to see if there was anything under the ground there, or if it was all just that like weird sand stuff, and I ended up finding something called Entrophyte. It's some sort of material used in later crafting, but I died before I could grab a bunch of it, so it's not like it even matters. Later that night, I went right back to farming turtles. I was still stomping Koopas on day 47 and thankfully managed to get all of the shells that I needed. Afterwards, I spent a lot of time in the limbo on day 47 just because I thought the place was super cool with all of its eeriness and eyeballs and messages that tell me I should not be there. I gathered up a bunch of chlorophyte on day 48 and used it to make turtle armor. I then went over to Draken to see if he knew anything now and he told me that there's some dude that just woke up from a nap and is really really upset about it. So I went to go make it summon but I ran into an issue. It requires a shark fin and if you remember correctly, I don't, I don't got an ocean to find a shark in. My only other option was to fight those sand sharks that come out during sandstorms, but their shark fin drop rate is significantly lower than the normal sharks. I spent the rest of day 48 trying to get a shark fin, but had no luck. I continued farming these sand sharks on day 49 and managed to obtain a single shark fin, so I made the summon and headed towards the ocean. Once I was there, I summoned shark fin and this guy sucked, man. Like the way it makes those super sharp curves is, is going to be so annoying. I inevitably lost, and I think it's mainly because I was melee, so I spent the rest of the day gathering up the materials to make the Jacob, a ranged weapon that works exactly how a revolver would work. It's got 6 bullets, it shoots kinda slow, and you gotta reload it. But it deals 237 damage. 237 damage, that's without all of like, the, the, the like emblems and equipment that I could have equipped. And, you can fan the hammer. If you don't know what that means, it, it, it's like, you take your like left or right hand, you like, you like hit part of the gun or whatever. I don't know all the logistics behind it, you hit part of the gun or whatever, and it allows the gun to fire all of its remaining bullets. On day 50 I made chlorified armor, reforged the Jacob, and spent the day making some equipment that allows me to have more bullets per reload, more bullet damage, faster reload, and bursts of speed while reloading. My gun now deals over 300 damage. Afterwards I spent the rest of the day in the desert farming some sand sharks and the Jacob works absolutely amazingly. By day 51 I had gotten enough shark fins for a couple of attempts at shark fin, but nothing came from any of them because about halfway through the fight it just starts raining and I guess you can't breathe while it's raining. The logic behind all this made no sense whatsoever but I figured that if I built a roof over my arena the rain wouldn't get in, right? Wrong. The rain just flows right through the blocks and down into my lungs and I die. I then figured that if I wore some scuba gear I would be able to breathe but the issue with that is only the normal sharks found in the ocean drop diving helmets and in case you forgot I have no ocean. I spent the rest of the night and almost all of day 52 making my own ocean, like I, like, like, like I, dug, I dug out a hole and just filled it with water. Spent the rest of the day doing that. By the end of the night, things were working great, ocean enemies were spawning, and I had even gotten a few shark fins, but I googled their drop rate, and I only have a 5% chance of getting this diving helmet. Only a 5% chance, and, and not to mention that the sharks weren't even showing up that often, it was like one every couple of minutes. I was not about to sit here for an hour or more in hopes of getting a, 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 a freaking diving helmet. All because this game is bugged, so on day 53 I opened up the cheat sheet, grabbed the helmet, and just instantly disabled the mod. All I wanted was the helmet. I even I even tried going to NPCs and like buying the helmet. They they didn't they don't have it. They don't got it. Anyways, I upgraded the diving helmet all the way to the Arctic diving gear and fought Shark Fern for the final time.
Finally, oh my goodness. This all took me so long to do. This boss was annoying as hell to deal with, but thankfully it was over. I got a whole load of nothing from Sharkburn, so I headed to the jungle and spent the rest of the night building my Plantera arena. I continued building this arena on day 54, and just as I was able to fight the Plantera, I noticed that there was a side boss right before it, the Tempest Sharkburn. I just had to fight Sharkburn while it's raining. I'm not totally sure why this was a thing, because the boss seemed just as hard as the normal one, but it, it doesn't matter, because I was struck by lightning during the time I fought it and died anyways. I then went right back to the jungle and defeated the Planetara. I'm not totally sure what I was doing on day 55, but looking back at the footage, I, I pretty much did, like, absolutely nothing. I did end up defeating the Tempest Shark Friend, though, and got a couple of guns. The Snappy Shark that shoots gouging teeth which cut enemies' defense in half, and the Starfish Blaster that just shoots Starfish. 
On day 56, I turned the Starfish Blaster into the Starfish Burster. It fires four Starfish and Bursts at the cost of one, and it was it, it, it was pretty fire. The next boss I had to defeat was called Kratrocity, and said I had to try to open some sort of crate for it to spawn, but I'd never seen one of these crates before, so I did a bit of research, and it turns out that the merchant sells something called the Contractor that allows enemies to just start dropping crates. I bought it, activated it, and summoned a Blood Moon to ensure that I would get a good amount of crates. By the end of the night, I had plenty of crates, but I can't open any of them. Like it says, if I use the wrong key, it's gonna it's gonna do something that I don't want it to do, and I don't, I don't want that happening. I finished up the Blood Moon on day 57 and decided that I didn't have enough crates, so I summoned the Solar Eclipse, and in doing so, I could also get some Broken Hero Swords, so I spent the rest of the day doing this. On day 58, I made the Cert, a melee weapon that deals 205 damage and seems really cool, but it wouldn't be very practical, so I didn't ever really end up using it. Later on in the day, I used a spare gold key to open up one of the crates and it summoned Kratrocity. I ended up losing, but I got much further than I actually thought I would. I summoned it again right after and managed to finish the job. There we go, whoa. The video game industry has been tamed. New items are available for live. I like video games. Kratrocity wasn't that hard of a boss, just a bit repetitive. 
From it, I got an actual key that's used to open up one of the crates, and from the crate, I got the Jackpot, a ranged weapon that launches money-filled rockets that explode into coins and inflicts Midas. I also got an equipable named the Midas Insignia. Picking up coins gives me random buffs, shop prices are 20% cheaper, I get 50% increased damage against enemies afflicted with Midas, and I gain increased damage with the more money I have sacrificed to Midas. It caps at 25% at 10 platinum coins, so you already know I just threw away a bunch of money for this. With all this increase in damage, my Jacob now deals 409 damage, and my Jackpot now deals 81 damage. But to be honest, I think that the Jackpot is better. It just, it's, it's, it's a rocket. It just, I don't know, it just does better. I began my fight with the Golem on day 60, but something's been changed about this boss. Like, 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 bro was not this difficult before. After failing a couple of times, I was finally able to beat it, but I needed more beetle husks, so I fought him again until I won. I also needed a Pixar because I had to make the next door, but in order to make it, I needed a Prismal Instractor that just so happens to be hidden somewhere in the jungle temple walls. Once I had found the crafting station, I went out to gather up all the materials necessary to start making this ore. After gathering them all up, I made me some Prismal Bars. I began doing some research on what to make with these Prismal Bars on day 61, and eventually I decided on the True Calibur, a combination of all the Calibur swords that came before. It summons true spectral blades to hone it on my mouse cursor, and summons spectral swords on contact. I tested the sword out on Sharkburn, and this sword was absolutely beautiful. The, the, the true amalgamation of all of my hard work. I fully switched over to the melee class after that. I equipped the warrior emblem, put on my beetle armor, made the prismal gauntlet, which is just a better version of like the, the I can't remember the name off the top of my head, like that fire gauntlet, you know what I'm talking about? And I made a bunch of Icor flasks. I then went over to Draken to see what was next, and he told me that the mechanical bosses were back, but he quite literally described them as a mechanical clusterfuck. In order to spawn this boss, I needed to harvest more souls, so while the machine was going at it with an ice fairy, I gathered up some more stuff to make more prismal bars. With the prismal bars, I made the prismal booster on day 63. It's a pair of wings that specializes in mobility, just like my ones previously, and it was no joke, like this thing was cracked out of its mind when it came to speed. I also made this thing called the Twins of Fate. It's an equipable that uses the guides and the clothers' actual health to reflect projectiles. I then took some time off from fighting bosses to make myself a little basement under my basement. A, a, a sub-basement, if you will, to store all of my trophies. I, I, I also forgot to mention that if you kill a boss without taking any damage whatsoever, you, you get a trophy. Once night had arrived, I gathered up all of my courage and summoned the mechanical clusterfuck.
Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my god. Oh my god, there's a lot of lasers going everywhere. Thank god my sword has like 17 million different buffs on it. I lost my cursor. Boom. First try. Oh my god, so easy. This guy, or, or, or guys, was no big deal whatsoever. They were weak and gave me pretty much nothing. Afterwards, I went over to Draken thinking that I was about to fight another boss, but he mentioned that both the aliens and the Ethereum monsters are up to something, so I got right to fighting the Old One's army. It took me a couple of long-ass tries, but I was eventually able to defeat all of the Ethereum monsters by halfway through day 65. Immediately afterwards, I took on the Martians, and this took me the rest of the day. Now that both parties have been dealt with, I figured out what I was actually doing all this for. The servants of the Lord of the Moon have been watching over me, and I now met the requirements to summon them. By the time I was ready to summon these servants, it was already day 66, so I kind of just messed around until nighttime. Once night had arrived, I summoned the servants of the Lord of the Moon. Those servants were more like thugs just trying to do the Moon Lord's bidding, but 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 don't you worry, I, I deal with him very, very soon. Up next was a boss named Phaethon. The only information I had to go off of was that I could find it in the near Terrarian orbit. When looking for it, I began to break the crystals that would pop up every now and then. I'm I'm not totally sure why I did this, it just it just seemed like the right thing to do. I spent literally an hour looking for this boss and found absolutely nothing. I, I don't know if I was doing something wrong, or if my game was bugged, or if the mod was just broken because it's so old, but Phaethon was nowhere to be found. 
I did some research and Phaethon is supposed to be sort of like trapped or suspended by these asteroid tethers, but every time I found them, the boss was just not there. I even looked at other people's videos on this mod, like like Adrian's and Phaethon just, it, Phaethon should have been there. Phaethon was there for them, but it just wasn't for me. Eventually, I just gave up on this boss and, and hoped that I wouldn't need anything from it later on. I, I, I totally did. Since it had been an hour, I just rounded and told myself it had been about three days, so it's now day 70. After all this bullshit, I went over to the dungeon to take out all of my anger on the lunatic cultist, and this guy who had, he had no idea what was about to happen to him. Once I had obliterated that cultist, I was told by the terror wraith, like the, the next boss is named the terror wraith, and I was told by him that he had stolen the ancient manipulator from the lunatic cultist, and that I would have to defeat him before getting it back. I, 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 oh my god, the anger was just piling on. The anger, it was, it was getting rough. I spent the rest of the day and most of day 71 taking down three of the four pillars and making an asphalt path. Once all my preparation was done, I summoned the terror wraith for the first and final time. All right, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. That guy deserved to die for stealing from others, honestly. Like, they, 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 they teach you to not do that shit in like preschool. With the Terror Wraith out of the way, I took down the last pillar and defeated the Moon Lord with ease on day 72. Everything I got from the Moon Lord was useless, except for the Lumini Ore, obviously, and the salvage supply crate that I got. I was gonna start making armor or something, but for me to even make Lumini bars, I would have to defeat a mini boss named the Prismatic Banshee. I was I was just so angry at this point that everything was so difficult and buggy. You have you have no idea. I didn't know what was in the crate, so I tried to open it and out came Great Trogeddon. I'm not gonna even bother making a boss fighting clip for this boss because it's pretty much the exact same thing as Kratrocity. And it took me 13 entire minutes to defeat this guy. 13 full minutes to do this. I, I don't think you guys want to sit through a 13 minute boss fight. From Kratro Geddon, I got the actual key to open the strange supply crate and something called Raw Avarice. It's it's used to make later stuff, but I never ended up using it. After I was done sorting through things, I headed towards the hollow so that I could fight the Prismatic Banshee and begin crafting like Luminite and new stuff, but it just wouldn't spawn. I looked at other people's videos, knew exactly what to do, and no matter how many times I would watch it wind all the way up, it would just instantly despawn. I, 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 
I'm not sure why it did this, but it did, and I just have to live with it. I had pretty much given up on everything in this mod at this point. Like, half the endgame bosses didn't work, and I would no longer be able to even progress. I ended up pulling out the cheat sheet and just started cheating in materials that I would have gotten had the mod actually been working, and after getting these materials and making new gear, I thought that things might actually take a turn for the better. But that was until I tried summoning the next boss, the Supreme Pinky. You'll never be able to guess what happened. It would despawn as soon as I started dealing damage to it. It would it would it would stay alive if I did absolutely nothing to it, but as soon as I started to, as, as soon as it started to take damage, it would just despawn. I was completely over the mod at this point, so I whipped out the cheat sheet again and just messed around with some of the endgame weapons. Look at this sick sword. That's that's pretty cool. Check out this melee weapon that I could have gotten that is literally just the arm of the moon lord. That that's crazy, ain't it? Anyways, I I, I even I tried summoning the final boss, but you'll never guess what happened. It didn't work!